Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mio Kitano and I'm a surgical oncologist at the Mace Cancer Center. And today I will be talking about how we can treat metastasis or spread of colon and rectal cancer to the peritoneum. And I will talk briefly about what that structure is. First, I want to briefly talk about what colorectal cancer is. So it's a cancer that affects the large intestine um, and I'm going to talk about what uh, the large intestine is, is made of. So the largest intestine, aka colon, um, it's comprised mostly of colon and the rectum. And the colon is comprised of five different main structures. So there's the cecum, and you can see here in the diagram, um, the cecum is where the appendix um, hangs from, ascending colon where it goes up and then goes across a structure called the transverse colon. It goes down to descending colon, then to sigmoid colon, and then there is the rectum, which is a little reservoir that, um, that stores your stool uh, before you evacuate. And colon cancer, or both colorectal cancer, is one of the really most common cancers in the United States. This is the fourth most common cancer in this country. And as oncologists or surgical oncologists, we talk about five-year relative survival. What that means is the number of people who are still alive in five years. And so you can see here in this graph that people who are diagnosed with localized or early stage colorectal cancer, 90.9% .9 of the people are still alive from the time of diagnosis for five years. But then you can see here that people who present with distant or metastasis or spread to other organs, um, unfortunately, those people are only alive uh, or 15% of them are alive in five years. And my talk is going to focus mostly on the patient with distant metastasis or spread of the cancer. First, I want to talk about the common areas of metastasis. And when I say metastasis, this means that spread of cancer. So for colon cancer and rectal cancer, the pattern is a little bit different, but they're pretty similar. So the colon cancer uh, most commonly spreads to liver, um, and, so, uh, and it is the same for rectal cancer. Number three and four are slightly different. So colon, uh, the third most common site of metastasis is the peritoneum. And then for rectum, the third most common site of metastasis is the bone. And I want to briefly talk about what peritoneum is. So peritoneum is a lining of the abdominal cavity. That's the way I like to explain to my patients what that structure is. So it lines all the internal organs as well as the inner side of the abdominal cavity. So this is one of the structures that both colorectal cancer like to spread to. And you can see on the diagram, uh, one, the one in the middle, it shows the sort of the, the, the body being cut across uh, from top to bottom and, uh, and it shows the, the spine in the back and then the left side of that diagram is the front of the body. And then on the right hand side, the diagram is somebody laying on their back. So the front is the, the belly button and then the back is the, is the back, you can see the spine. So uh, peritoneum is, it's a little bit of a difficult structure to see, but it is basically the lining that lines everything that's inside your abdominal cavity. So what does this look like? So these are two pictures of what peritoneal metastasis uh, looks like. So when you do what's called a diagnostic laparoscopy, and some of you may have had this procedure, we put a camera in and take a look around inside the abdominal cavity itself, and you can see these small little nodules all throughout the entire abdominal cavity, and you can see up against the abdominal wall or also stuck on the surface of the organs. And this is what peritoneal metastasis, and I'm gonna refer to this as PM uh, from the rest of the, the, the presentation. And I'm going to explain what synchronous metachronous uh, means. So synchronous means that when you are diagnosed with colon or rectal cancer, at the time of the diagnosis, they will do a whole body scan and they, um, and they try to see if the cancer is contained within the organ of origin, so either colon or rectum, or they try to see if the cancer has spread or not. That's the first step when you get diagnosed with colorectal cancer. 
And when they discover that you have peritoneal metastasis at the time of your diagnosis, that means that it's a synchronous metastasis. So about five to 8% of the patients, when they get diagnosed with colorectal cancer, they already have spread to their peritoneal lining. And metachronous means that they have cancer come back later on once they have the treatment for their colorectal cancer. Let's say you have the cancer to, uh, or surgery to remove the, your cancer, and then five, 10, even 15 years later, um, you um, are being watched by your doctor, and then they discover uh, metastasis or spread to the peritoneal lining later after the treatment, your original treatment for your colorectal cancer. So about four to 19% of the patients after they receive the treatment for their colorectal cancer, they can have still have spread to the peritoneal lining. And of course, um, this is the autopsy data when they looked at everyone who passed uh, with diagnosis of colorectal cancer, and they could have been from heart attack or car accident or, or even from the colorectal cancer itself, is that they looked at everyone who have passed with the diagnosis of colorectal cancer, up to 80% of the patients were found to have spread to their peritoneal lining. So it is a relatively common area of spread. So what can we do? So what can we do to treat spread of colorectal uh, cancer to the peritoneal lining or peritoneal metastasis? And the most common treatment uh, that is given is systemic therapy. And then I'm a surgeon, so I'm also going to talk a little bit about surgery. And when I talk about systemic therapy, the way I like to, um, to, to explain this is that it's a whole body treatment. Most people call it chemotherapy, but nowadays we have so many different type of types of treatments. So whole, um, whole body treatment or systemic care therapy can be comprised uh, by either chemotherapy or immunotherapy, which will kind of enhance or stimulate your own immune system to, to attack the cancer cells. Um, or you can even use biologic or targeted therapy where they actually treat specific mutation of your tumor. So we have so many new discoveries to treat colorectal cancer, which is very, very exciting. However, um, having said that, there, the surgery is still an option. And this approach is actually not very well known. And actually, a lot of the the oncologists or chemo doctors in the community may actually not even know that this type of treatment is available. So the surgery is comprised of what's called CRS, so it's cytoreductive surgery, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit in a, in a second, um, and then also uh, giving chemo inside the abdominal cavity. It's called the intraperitoneal chemotherapy. And there are so many different types of preparations uh, to give chemotherapy that I'm going to talk um, in a couple seconds. So um, what is CRS? So cytoreductive surgery. And cyto means cell. And then uh, reductive means to reduce the volume. So some doctors call it debulking. But what CRS means is that we remove everything all the cancer deposits within the peritoneal lining, within the abdominal cavity uh, through surgery. We peel them, strip them, we, we scrape them, we actually sometimes burn them usually, uh, through thermal ablation, but remove everything that we can see with our naked eye. Um, and then we sometimes do what's called the peritonectomy, which is the stripping of the lining. It's like it's it's pretty much like peeling the wallpaper off the of the walls. Uh, the, and we do that on the lining that contains the tumor deposits. And the intraperitoneal chemotherapy. So how is it given? So it, it has so many different permutations of how how it can be given. So it can be given intraoperatively. So at the time of surgery, when we're removing everything, once we're done removing everything, we can give the chemo then. But then it can also be given perioperatively. That means that it's given before uh, the surgery or after the surgery. And then there is also what's called the normothermic chemotherapy, which is basically room temperature. And then there is the hyperthermic chemotherapy, uh, which a lot of people refer it to as HIPEC which is a heated chemotherapy at 42 centigrade or 107 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a really, really hot chemo. Um, and of course, the approach can be done uh, open, which is a traditional uh, big incision surgery, or a laparoscopic or minimally invasive through small little keyhole incisions. And then one of the newer approaches is called pipe hack, which is the pressurized 
administration of chemotherapy inside the abdominal cavity, which is currently only given under clinical trials. So this is a short schema or a little diagram that shows how HIPEC um, is done. So the patients um, undergo removal of all the tumors, and then once all the tumors are removed, uh, and I'm talking all the tumors that, that we can see with our naked eye, and we assume that there will be cells that we just cannot see with our naked eyes, and that's where the chemotherapy giving abdominal, within the abdominal cavity comes into play. So we temporarily close the abdominal cavity, and then we put these catheters, and then we bathe within the abdominal cavity with these heated chemotherapy, um, the duration can be anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, and also type of chemo can also vary um, depending on, on type of cancer, but the most common agent that is used is mitomycin C. And then this goes through a circuit uh, where the chemo and the, all the fluid is heated and then put back into the body, and they just it's a continuous circulation of the heated chemo for a um, given duration of time. So it is a uh, a pretty long surgery uh, because it involves uh, removing everything and then giving the chemo. So I usually tell my patients the big surgery, quote unquote, <laughs> the big surgery. So it can take anywhere from eight to even sometimes 20 hours. Uh, uh, sometimes some surgeons do it staged, meaning that um, it's done in, in, in two different days. But, but most of the time it's, it's a one long surgery. So you're probably wondering, um, so is this the right procedure for me? So this is the cytoreductive surgery and then given the intraperitoneal or intraabdominal chemotherapy. And that's a, that's a really good question. Um, and uh, the answer is that depends. So um, there are multiple different studies, um, we call them data or literature, is that what everything we do in medicine we want to be able to back it up by study. So we want to make sure that it is helpful and it's going to help you and not hurt you. So um, there are multiple different studies, um, both in Asia, in Europe, and in this country, and there are some conflicting studies. So currently, the administration of CRS with intraperitoneal chemotherapy, most commonly people refer to as HIPEC, um, is currently not the standard of care in this country. It is the standard of care for certain other cancers, but not for colorectal cancer. So um, the guidelines, so we use what's called the NCCN guideline, which is the uh, very standardized guideline for this, this country. And uh, the guideline says you can consider giving CRS and HIPEC for patients with colorectal cancer uh, uh, that it has spread to the peritoneal lining. And one thing that is also extremely important is that some insurance may not cover this procedure because some insurance consider this experimental. But this surgery is uh, routinely done on the clinical trial setting, and also it can be done under uh, standard of care as long as there is what's called a multidisciplinary discussion, um, and then it is recommended by the entire team treating, treating the patient. Another option to treat peritoneal metastasis or spread of cancer to the peritoneal lining is that there can be CRS, so the remove everything without the chemotherapy. And this approach is also a completely good option. Uh, some surgeons believe that if there is one or two or just very few nodules, is that we can safely remove those nodules and save the chemotherapy for, for a later, uh, later occasion. So there are multiple different combinations of treatment that can be given for patients with spread of colorectal cancer to the peritoneal lining. So this is a, really, a quick snapshot of the NCC and guideline that I talked about. So this is the most recent version, and the panel, um, it says the panel currently believes that complete cytoreductive surgery and or intraperitoneal chemotherapy can be considered in experienced centers for selected patients with limited peritoneal metastasis for whom R0 resection can be achieved. And R0 means that we are able to get it all. So that kind of makes sense. If we don't think we can get it all, even giving all the chemo in the world inside the abdominal cavity, it's not going to help. So, so if, we are not, if we don't think that we can get it all, we actually don't offer the surgery. 
Uh, but as the guidelines suggest, is that the, the recommendation is not clear cut. So the key point uh, when you are diagnosed with colorectal cancer would spread to the peritoneal lining, either at the time of your diagnosis or even later on after you receive your treatment and a few years later you have spread to the peritoneal lining. The most important thing, and I cannot emphasize enough, is that you want to go to a specialized center. So a specialized center that offers this surgery and you have to, um, and you want to make sure that there is a multidisciplinary discussion. What that means is that colorectal cancer and all, all cancers, they are very, very complex. Not all cancers are the same and not all patients are the same. So you want to make sure that there are a team of doctors treating you, not just an oncologist, not just a surgeon, is that you want to make sure that there, is, there are a team of doctors um, who work together um, and they talk about you and make sure that, that, that they're offering all the pot possible treatments, all the possible options, and then ultimately decide what's best for you. And the decision shouldn't come from just one doctor or just from you, but, but the decision should be made uh, uh, together as, as a team. So um, that's um, the brief summary of what uh, we can do to treat uh, colorectal cancer once it spreads to the peritoneal lining. Um, and here I have uh, my email address, and actually I'm on Twitter, and, and I usually routinely give my cell phone number and my email address to my patients. So uh, if you have any additional questions, I am more than happy to, to, to take, uh, take your questions. And, and of course, Mace Cancer Center is one of the few centers, actually it might be the only center in San Antonio currently offering uh, CRS and HIPEC for patients with spread of colorectal cancer to the peritoneal lining.